Hey everybody, this is Deb with Truthfication Chronicles. You probably wondered where I was. Well, I've been watching hearings. <laughs> I do have some stuff I want to share from some of them, but oh gosh, guys, this one lasted 12 hours today. And I really only watched like, oh, I guess probably the last five hours. Most of it was on double speed, but about the last um, half hour, I think, was on regular speed, which is almost painful because it was mostly Democrats. But anyway, this is just incredible. When they have something that they're going to vote on in the House, they put it through these committees and they have to do what's called markup on them. And that's essentially where the two sides kind of debate back and forth and give their points of view and the minority proposes amendments and you know the majority at this point is saying no we don't like your amendments but you know supposedly that's where consensus is supposed to happen well obviously that's not happening these days but with this one it was very interesting and there were a lot of really good exchanges a lot of good things that the republicans had to say the democrats were pretty much the same talking points and i don't think i've ever heard the democrats so thrilled about the constitution and so patriotic about our country as they have been in this entire hearing i mean they just that's all they wanted to talk about well we got to protect the constitution of course you know, when Obama was in there, they thought the Constitution was out of date and needed to be updated and need to become more uh, part of the real world as it is now. You know, progressives. That's why they're called progressives, folks. So it was just kind of funny. I And somebody somewhere along the line said they didn't know the Democrats were such constitutionalists. And yeah, that really was it. I mean, it just kept kind of going back and forth on this. And so, of course, any amendment the Republicans proposed, they shot down. So it was just listening to the talking points from both sides, really. I mean, I'm not saying that the Republicans were just giving talking points because they did give actual rebuttals to what the Democrats were saying. But the Democrats considered them talking points. And really, that's the same thing. How much can you say? It's the same stuff over and over because when they present these lies, you say the same things. And, you know, they all just came across the Democrats as so patriotic. And yeah, I couldn't believe some of the stories they were bringing up to try to tug on people's heartstrings and everything. So anyway, it got down to this very end, and I doubt if very many people actually watched the very end of this, which I want to kind of take you through. Well, they were voting on this particular process thing, and of course, all the Democrats voted yes, all the Republicans voted no, and so Jerry Nadler ruled that it was a yes because... That's the way it was going to fall. And the, this time, for about the first time, the Republicans did not ask for a roll call vote because it's like you can see it says 1114 p.m. Eastern time. This has been going on all day long, literally like 12 hours. This is the live stream. And so, yeah, see, it started way back here 12 hours ago from when I'm doing this. And I'm doing it not too awful long after that. So anyway, I want to catch you up on this. I want you to pay attention to what's going on and I'll kind of help you through because there's some parts you won't be able to hear very well. And I want to make sure you understand what was going on. The nature of a substitute is agreed to. To be clear, the... the uh... I think there, the reason he kept looking over to Doug Collins, I think is because he expected them to ask for a roll call vote since they had been doing it like every time. So the ayes have, have it. The amendment in the nature of a substitute is agreed to. To be clear, the vote this committee just took was not a vote on final passage of the article. It was a procedural vote which precedes final passage of each of the articles. It has been a long two days of consideration of these articles, and it is now very late at night. I want the members on both sides of the aisle to think about what has happened over these last two days and to search their consciences before we cast our final votes. Therefore, the committee will now stand in recess until tomorrow morning at 10 a.m., at which point I will move to divide the question 
so that each of us may have the opportunity to cast up or down votes on each of the articles of impeachment and to let history be our judge. The committee is in recess. Okay, now did you hear Doug Collins over there to the side? He goes, whoa, <laughs> because they were expecting to vote tonight. And the, all of a sudden, Jerry Nadler says, no, you're going to have to come back tomorrow so we can vote. And it's like, whoa, what's going on? And so here's where things get a little hairy. Mr. Chairman, there was no consulting from the minority ranking member on your schedule for tomorrow, which you just blown up schedules for everyone. You chose not to consult the ranking member on a schedule issue of this magnitude. So typical. This is the, the that's so typical, I believe, was oh the guy from Louisiana, the Republican from Louisiana. I can't remember his name right off. Oh, Mr. Johnson, because there's two Mr. Johnsons. So, yeah, I am pretty sure that's who that was. You'll also hear Louis Gohmert here in just a minute because they kept their mics on. Really smart of them to do that. They should have left their mics on longer, honestly, because people that like me that were still watching had some good stuff to hear. But you will get to see them. They did a little presser at the end. So anyway, here. This is the kangaroo court that we're talking about. She's outrageous. It's more Stalin-esque oh, than unbelievable. Outrageous, Not even actually. consult. Just Stalin-esque. That's a Louis Gohmert. a dictator. It's good to hear about that. 10 a.m. Unbelievable. And he just leaves. There he goes. <laughs> Collins is still talking. He's like, you're going to have to come back again tomorrow morning because they're leaving. <laughs> they chose to do they chose to do whatever they're going to do. And then they talk about uh, somebody over at the side that you can't see says something. And it's the Republican side says something about um, <laughs> they the TV cameras aren't rolling anymore. So that's why they're leaving <laughs> or people aren't watching or something like that. Nobody's watching. <laughs> and Louis Gohmert goes, hey, well, they're going to say, hey, we had a three-day trial. <laughs> yeah. But then they'll point out, no fact witnesses, none. Remember, they've had no fact witnesses at all. The only witnesses they had were those four uh, lawyers, and three of them were for the Democrats, and only the one, Jonathan Turley, was the one that was for us. But he didn't even vote for Trump. I mean, he's not a Trump fan. He just believes that they are wrong in what they're doing with the impeachment. And so it goes on. We didn't have any fact witnesses, but we had a three-day trial. Now, you can just see, I mean, they're all sitting there shaking their heads. Just an unbelievable because that's just not the way it's supposed to work. This is another example of how the Democrats are just running roughshod over all of their rules. I mean, these are House rules that are always followed, but yet, oh, no, let's not follow it this time. Now, I'm going to jump ahead to where Doug Collins actually gets to talk to the press. Oh, there he's, I don't know if you heard that, but he said, that's a really, that was a really sneaky move on their part. So, and, and somewhere, I don't know if it's right along in here, he says, we would never do that to them. We would never treat them like that. Yeah, there, we'd never treat them like that. And I don't know who it was that was set, that said it, but it was a Republican. Okay, now, there's where a bunch of press, you can see all the cameras and everything. And he starts talking. At first, you can't hear him very well, but it comes on so you can hear him better. But, you know, this is just outrageous what they just did. I mean, Jerry Nadler should not have done that. There's no reason why they shouldn't have. I realize they've been there for a very long time. And, you know, 12 hours, that's a long time to be there. And they did take a couple breaks here and there. But, oh, you know, they just don't care about anything. They are so blinded by their hatred for Donald Trump that they can't even do 
little things like this, the common courtesies of talking to the actual ranking member to clear the schedule thing. Because, you know, when they're working in Congress, I do understand that you're sitting there probably thinking, well, they sure don't work too many days, but they have to come home and they have to reconnect with their constituents. So a lot of times when they come home on the weekends, they try to schedule things or, you know, they want to make sure that they're connecting with the people in their neighborhoods and the people around them who are the people who sent them to Congress. And so just saying that they're not in Washington, D.C. doesn't necessarily mean they're not working, okay? I just want to clarify that because that is part of what they're supposed to be doing, too, is connecting with people at home. And some of it is just going home to be with their families because they are sometimes away from their families, and the weekend is the only time they get to see them. So I think that's fair, too, because... These guys are really earning their pay this year. That's for sure. Anyway, so here we go. Violation of the trust between our committee, the chairman and the ranking member I've ever seen. There was no discussion, no discussion about time for not. We were going to vote tonight. We had actually talked about ending it up with one side and the other doing our final comments like we did. And then to do that right there shows that Chairman Nadler's integrity is zero. His staff is zero. They have nothing that they can offer anymore except the kangaroo cord that we've seen for the last three days. The giant rubber stamp that you've just seen in this committee has made this committee irrelevant. This chairman has made himself irrelevant. That was the most Bush League play I have seen in my life because they want to simply get it back on the cameras because it's after 11 o'clock tonight and they don't think enough people is watching. I have never seen anybody want to get in front of these cameras more than this group right here because they don't have anything to impeach this president on. They don't have anything that they can move on except do Bush League stuff like this. Anybody in America, this should show the American people why this right here is wrong. They should show, this, this is right now, why this president has been attacked for three years, and tonight it showed it completely. Hearing by Amber. So that was it. And, you know, it just was crazy. For the most part, they were fairly nice in the back and forth, at least the parts that I saw. But uh, they, the Republicans were really holding them to the standard of you have to have evidence. And if you don't have evidence, you cannot claim somebody is guilty of something. And the Democrats, of course, kept saying, well, he betrayed our country because he wanted to get Ukraine's help in the 2020 election. And it's like, no, that's not. That particular talking point really ticks me off because it's not true. It is so not true. And we know it's not true. <sighs> so it is frustrating when you watch this and you hear them talk because you know the people that are saying these things on the Democrat side they're acting like they're these super patriots and you're sitting there going, uh, no, no, they're not. Because have you heard them? They don't want any border wall. They want anybody who wants to come into our country just to come in. And they're so protective of the elections. Oh, we want honest elections and every vote to count. And yeah, these are the people talk about projection. I mean, we know what they've done in the past, and it's like a standard joke around here. Uh, granted, I live in kind of uh, a red state, but it's a pretty much a standard joke around here that if grandma or grandpa died, they're going to vote Democrat next year. I mean, that's the way it works around here. That's just common knowledge around here. So we all are aware that they're the ones that are manipulating elections. And the sad thing is, that's what they're accusing Trump of doing. They're saying he cheated in one election. He'll cheat again. They said that. Somebody said that. I don't remember which one of them said it. He cheated in one election. See, they do not believe that he legitimately won. And they just don't like us. They don't like anyone that supports him. They view us as kind of low lifes, deplorables, right? And so, yep, I'm a deplorable. I'm okay with that. Because if people like that think I'm deplorable, then I must be doing something right. Uh, speaking of doing things right, um, I did get a chance today to see some new updated rules for YouTube. 
And I wanted to inform them of you because they are going to really step up uh, removing comments that are considered harassment. So be careful what you say in comments on your favorite videos, okay? Just, I mean, you can make a lot of comments. I'm not worried about that. Just be careful about comments that have to do with punishing certain people, okay? We want to be very careful that nothing comes across as being um, a harassment or a threat or, you know, inciting violence of any kind. We've got to be really careful about that, folks. And on any video you comment on, yes, I want to see justice done as much as you do. And yes, I know what the penalty is for the crimes that they've done. But let's just be careful about that and what you say for any Patriot channel that you're part of, because we don't want to lose our channels just because of those kinds of things. And I saw another one today that lost their channel, uh, the monetization on their channel, because they were labeled as hateful. And so I don't know how it's going to work out. I'm hoping that my videos won't come across that way because I do try to work mostly with just the um, the documents, actual government documents. So if those are hateful, you got to kind of wonder what perspective it, it is of someone who's doing that. How are they determining that? I don't know. And it doesn't really say too much on their, you know, the on the page that they link to. I will put the link down below so you can read through it if you want to read that new little updated thing. So it, it's going to get tough. And like I said, I'm, it's not that I don't think they're going to purge channels. I was just sure it wasn't going to happen like on the very day. So I do think that we're going to see some channels go down. We will, but they can't just do them all at once or it'll be way too obvious. So I'm assuming it'll be little at a time. And as for me, I don't know if mine's going to be one of them. I'm kind of going on the idea that maybe it will be, and I can't really count on this in the future, but I do have the bit shoot one. Um, I still don't know why it hasn't transferred over any of the videos that it said it was going to transfer. So I don't know the idea of me having to upload all of my videos. By the way, I have over 500 now. Do you know that? I have over 500 videos. Um, it's been a lot of videos. <laughs> I don't even remember all of them sometimes. But um, yeah, anyway, so just kind of keep your eye out and be nice to your people that you watch. Because I know a lot of you watch different ones. And I wish I could watch everyone that you watch too. Because some of you watch such great channels. But there's just not enough time to watch the channels and watch the hearings and actually get videos done. So that's kind of what happened yesterday. I just ran out of steam. So I apologize for that. Anyway, there we go. And I will leave the links down below. I wanted to show you that. So anyway, that's what I've got for you on this one. I want to thank you for stopping by and I'll see y'all later. Bye.